Before we start, the first part of this video is just me rambling on about the Spyro games. There's a timestamp in the description skipping straight to the making section, as well as a link to a version without me talking at all. But if you're still here, I can start waxing lyrical. The Spyro games weren't the first video games I ever played. That was actually SSX on my uncle's PlayStation 1. But it was easily the game series I most associated with my childhood. I grew up playing them, and spent hundreds if not thousands of hours plugging away from the age of five. Despite that, I never actually got 100% on them until I was much older. That damnable snowboard race took me over a decade. But they stayed with me and started my love of video games. It's up to my parents to decide if that's a good thing or not, but as far as hobbies go, Spyro is definitely to blame for that one. And so I couldn't pass up the opportunity to make something so that the new release was a bit more special even if I can't play it immediately, as I don't actually own the consoles. So let's get started. I've shown all of these steps before, so to quickly summarise, I found an image I liked, turned those black outlines white in Photoshop to create an image border, and then traced the image to create a vector pattern in Illustrator. The laser reads black as engraved, so it produces the correct pattern. This was then cut out onto a black walnut piece. More importantly, if you use two layers of wood, you could fairly easily cut this design out by hand with a scroll or coping saw, which would mean you don't need the laser or the software. Printing the image out and gluing it to the wood would be helpful for getting the lines accurate. I engraved the design repeatedly to get it deep enough as well. This wood had a bit of a warp on it, but nothing terrible. For the resin inlay, you'll need the resin, the pigments, the mixing vessels and the tools, an accurate set of scales, gloves, mask and the catalyst. This is 2% catalyst by weight, hence the importance of accurate weighing. I always overestimate, so I went for 50 grams. On to now a science lesson, before we go any further. This is a colour wheel, and in order to make a perfect purple colour, we simply mix red and blue together. So we take the resin, and add red. And next, we add blue. And then it comes out as this perfect uh, purple colour. Uh, but if we add maybe a bit more red, it would be a little bit nicer. Or a little more, perhaps. With some stirring, don't, don't forget the stirring. Uh, you know, it works perfectly 100% of the time. Uh, and don't forget to add the catalyst. You see, this has worked absolutely perfectly. The science is sound. We have produced exactly what we were looking for. There we go. If you want to follow my steps exactly, you should go on a research trip to Africa for three months, and upon your return, you should buy some purple pigment. My camera doesn't actually pick up purple very well, or at all, but I promise this is the correct colour. Open the resin container with extreme prejudice. I used 15 grams for a test run, to avoid making the same mistake as I did last time. When I was ready, I moved on to the actual thing and again used 50 grams. Like I said earlier, the purple colour is actually accurate, but the camera hasn't picked it up and it looks horrifically grey. I used aluminium foil to prevent me from pouring the resin into the wrong part, and used a scalpel to clean the edge. But I made a terrible mistake. See if you can spot it. In case you missed it, here it is again at regular speed. Sadly, I didn't even notice until after I'd made the orange resin for a flame bit, and thus begins an hour of my life, gone forever, over a foolish mistake. With a combination of craft knives, scalpels, dremels, and sanding, I eventually managed to clean it up. When 
when that was done, I again filled it in orange resin, and after that was set, I moved on to the actual sanding proper. Starting off with a very coarse grit, in this case P40, before moving on to much finer grits over time. When that was done, I cleaned it with the tissue to prevent the dust from ruining the finish and then I opened up the pot of liquid gold. Try not to get high on the fumes and apply an excess of this which you can later wipe off. There's no harm in putting on too much but too little will just not have as nice an effect. Don't forget to clean up so that the dust doesn't ruin your work. Finish with a very fine grit like a thousand or even 1500 and your plaque is finished. Admire the way that it catches the light, which you won't be seeing for the next month after Spyro Reignited Trilogy is released. Thank you for watching. So when I was watching some of the footage of people playing Spyro, I was actually kind of shocked at how badly they seem to be playing, especially on the uh, toasty level. So of course I immediately tried it myself and thought I'd be amazing at it. Not so much. So if there's one thing I really want to see in the finished game, um, it's it's not some of the character interactions, it's not some of the really nice cool scenes, it's not the character art, it's, it's actually just this. Just this one thing where you fire the top of that chest off and it hits something else off in the distance. That was, that was almost my favourite part and if, if that's not in, it, it gets a 0 out of 10 from me.